Trying to glaze it up again. Does ReZero Season 3 live up to the hype? What hype? Who hyped it up? Everyone on Twitter. Did it? Season 3? Season 3 is not even over yet. Season 3 is barely started. Remember, there's potential for Season 3 to have 38 episodes if they're actually going to cover Arc 6. Right now we're on Arc 5. And only half of Arc 5 has been adapted through 8 episodes. Another 8 will drop in February. And then there may be, you know, 22 episodes to cover Arc 6. We never know. But did this first core, right? This first split core of ReZero Season 3 deliver hype? I think so. I didn't think it was mid. I didn't think it was disappointing at all. I thought that ReZero, right? For the material given, like, even though... Nothing has popped off in terms of like us getting dubs. I thought that it was pretty entertaining, yeah. Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. Hello. And All right, we can stop watching the video now. Thank you for watching this video. Please go give this guy a like on the video. He already answered it. Here's a link to the video. No need to watch the rest. It did live up to the hype. See you next time. And welcome. ReZero Season 3 has just completed only eight of its episodes. Yeah, it's on break until February, so you'll only have to cryogenically freeze yourself for a few months instead of four years this time. If you're from Elior Forest, that is. Yep. But how has it been? Does it live up to the enormous expectations it had? Did it have expectations? Who creates these expectations? Random Twitter accounts? Just your perception? Just your vibe? Like, who sets these standards? Nobody does, right? It's all about, like, how well received, I guess, the anime is by the people who watch it. And, I don't know, maybe there's been a shitload of, you know, forums and threads and different communities talking about it. It was, was it really that hyped up, season three? I think the whole aspect of it being, like, a Oonga Boonga... And it wasn't really, but in terms of like, compared to the previous seasons, the amount of action that it has, people are like calling this like the Marine Ford of ReZero in terms of like the arc being covered. In terms of the battles, I don't think it's lived up to the hype just yet. And it makes sense because this first half of the split core has been us getting fucked up. There has been some hype fight scenes, right? Capella episode was just stunning. The Reinhardt versus, you know, Fortuna, even Amelia versus, sorry, not Fortuna, Sirius. Amelia versus Sirius too. All of that was really good, but it's not like this crazy war that I've expected because that part, I'm assuming, is going to be the second half of this, you know, split core of Arc 5, right? When we are finally got the matchups and we're going to go there and defeat them, of course, all the action is going to get backloaded, right? It's going to get backloaded uh, in terms of, like, the hype for the action for me. Of course, it's ReZero. It'll show up every few years, slap you in the face a little, and then leave, and you'll be thankful each time. Now, my expectations were already sky high with how much I loved Season 2. But man, Season 3 has been exactly what I was hoping it would be. Which is why you should join me as I continue my journey All right. to discover the perfect anime. Now, when talking about ReZero Season 3, the first thing that needs to be brought up is the hour and a half first episode. I wish every episode was like that, but unfortunately, the average monkey watching this can't appreciate episode 1. They think it's filler. They think all the exposition and hype and setup and explaining what happened throughout the past year, right? Just fully fleshing out this story and giving more characterization to everybody. They think it's filler because, again, the average person doesn't understand ReZero. They... they can't comprehend it they have no understanding of the cut content and it's kind of unfair because as an anime only you're not going to be able to do that you have to go seek out this cut content you know either through reading the light novel yourself or watching content on youtube about those cut content it's just sad to see that episode one was an episode people called filler until the last like five minutes when Sirius pulled up and no it's not hour and a half with commercial breaks it is full on 90 minutes of an episode easily the longest episode in the series it's basically a movie Yep. Yeah, it's longer than either the OVAs or the first episode. And I'm so glad they went with it. I hope the beginning of the second half is also movie length, man. 
give me another just like 90 minute intro when we come back to in February. This approach, since it would have been about four episodes long normally, and the majority of it is either world building, setup, or even slice of life moments. Because if there's any anime that deserves to have its downtime, it's this one. Especially with. Yeah, it's nice to just stop suffering. Give us some breathing time. I want to just chill, look at Biko in her cute costumes, go talk to other people and see, check out whatever you've been up to. The first episode truly was so like, uh, it, it, it felt like I could breathe. The season two, that shit was suffocating. Just stuck in the sanctuary, overcome with these ridiculous challenges, constant just, you know, Crying and complaining and whining and, you know, getting mad, which makes a lot of sense, but, you know, getting over it usually. Season 3, episode 1 was like a breath of fresh air of like, oh, thank God. Okay, we're in a different, you know, a, a time has passed, we're in a different scene, let's talk about what's going on, let's catch up with what happens after. But I don't mind slice of life or setup episodes, I just think for the sake of the rest of the season, having what would have been a few episodes of build up leading up to the incredible ending of this episode would have been awkwardly paced. One of ReZero's greatest strengths is that sense of dread. Each arc so far has had clear dangers that have reset Subaru back to- That's right, and in terms of the slice of life and the breath of fresh air, that also actually still feeds into the dread because remember, Anytime you're doing slice of life in a show like ReZero, it's like a karma being built up, right? The more you have fun with slice of life episodes, the more you're going to suffer later. And usually the character that you have those slice of life episodes, for example, Mimi, how much Mimi and Garfield content do we have in the beginning? It was like so cute and funny, but I'm like, this bitch gonna die. And look what happened. To his save points. Back in season two, there was only two save points and one of them was only used once. Here though, we're starting off with a year time skip, and I presume Subaru hasn't died in that time, so we're- Yeah, cause Roswell stopped scheming. Roswell is not doing anything, and finally we can just actually live. Led into this false sense of security, Priestella is a gorgeous city which seems like it'd be an awesome vacation place, but I couldn't help but feel that something was up while- well Yeah, I feel like Anastasia set us up, I still believe this. She knew ahead of time that we're gonna get raided by Archbishops and invited the royal candidates over. 100% I believe this. While the episode was progressing? I mean, after all, we do run into Regulus early, and Garfield gets separated after seeing his mother, whom I thought was long since dead. Plus, with all the royal candidates gathered in one place, it just seems like disaster will be looming in some sort of way. It's and you gotta ask, why did they be gathered, right? Anastasia fucking knew how. I don't know. She has some sort of, like, future site? Network of informants? Some spies in the witch cult? I don't know. Too convenient otherwise. So when the entire final sequence with Sirius occurs, I don't think I moved for like 20 minutes after watching that. I stayed completely still when the end credits played. It lets you know exactly which anime you're watching. ReZero is back, baby. It never went away. And even if this is ReZero, we've only seen a few deaths for Subaru so far. Mr. Owl. How many lifts does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a- Natsuki Subaru! One, two, three, three. But hey, all three deaths were just as grotesque and disturbing. Yeah, all the deaths were pretty much stacked up here in that second episode of trying to go up against Sirius, right? And ever since then, no loop. It's very ominous. Where is the checkpoint? I think the checkpoint has to be made after the speech. I don't think you could possibly- it makes sense to repeat the speech. It, it just wouldn't be as impactful. Anytime there's these moments where it feels irreversible, like I think the checkpoint could be literally the end of season three, uh, part one, right? We just made all of the different plans of the different matchups. Maybe it's at the meeting table, who knows? Disturbing as you'd expect from this series. Well done, White Fox. I felt sick watching all three. Despite him dying thrice so far, there's been multiple times I expected him to just bite it right then and there. Him meeting Regulus, meeting Roya. Pardon? Sick watching all three. Despite him dying thrice so far, there's been multiple times I expected him to just bite it right then and there. He can't though, remember. Straight bet. He won't just kill himself to repeat the loop. That goes against the whole mindset and philosophy of what happened in season two. Him meeting Regulus, meeting Roy Alfard, getting utterly wrecked by Capella. It just goes to show that it's actually pretty hard to kill Subaru, which just makes all of 
Well, Capella also wasn't trying to kill Subaru here. She intentionally doesn't want to kill because she wants everything in the world to lust after her. His previous deaths hit that much harder, but I'm glad he hasn't died much because he went through all that character development in Season 2 to get to this point. Yes, a previous Subaru would have just jumped off and ended this loop at the first slight inconvenience, but he isn't the Subaru who would have accepted Mrs. Green's offer. He hates dying, and he should. I don't want Subaru to suffer even though I know he will due to the nature of the series. I and again, just creative way to prevent overuse, metagaming, min-maxing, optimizing for the show, saying, why didn't Subaru just end himself there? If I was Subaru, I would have just ended myself as soon as he lost the leg, right? Before Crucian, you know, uh, Subaru got cursed by the blood. Well, again, if we went that way, it would be kind of pointless. The story would just turn into a speed run, and it wouldn't really be fun. Tape then creates this unique mechanic of straight bed and, you know, prevents Subaru from abusing that power again. It's just such a smart way of balancing return by death. I want him to rely on the help of others to save Priestella, Amelia, and everyone within the city. And that's the Subaru who we see now. At the end of episode 8, he's already lost his leg, got in a dragon blood leg instead, and now after absorbing Crucia's dragon blood, it's filled half of his body. And the other half of his body is filled with the desires of ReZero. The amount of people thirsting for him when he took his jacket off is actually insane. Pro fans, hey, I understand it too. Guys, November's hit me really hard. Just remember, if you want to just uh, get likes online, you can rage bait or you can also just horny post. You don't have to have anything of substance. You don't have to create compelling content. You don't have to entice an audience with your personality or charisma. Just post horny shit. Just say some outlandish down bad things. And all the other Coomers will start barking and say, true, brother, true. What can I say? Amelia wasn't the only one who got a buff in Season 3. But the point being that this is a Subaru we've seen grow since the beginning. He's faced with unimaginable, impossible odds where death isn't just inevitable, but found everywhere he turns. And yet, despite how he's feeling given the current situation, he's still pushing forward. My favorite moment this season so far is easily the speech. The speech. Okay. Subaru didn't even want to give it in the first place, and yet he delivered one of the most inspiring speeches I've ever seen. And yeah, uh, a lot of people are gonna say Rem speech better, or like Erwin's speech and Attack on Titan. A lot, a lot of people are always gonna do the comparisons. I think the speech, the lead up into it, showed tremendous growth. I think the speech is supposed to show growth to Subaru, right? The fact that he didn't even think that he was worthy, I think shows so much growth from what we see in season one where he is perceiving himself to be the hero of this video game, right? He doesn't even realize that other people think so highly of him because of the accomplishments he's done in this perfect run. But when he thinks about it through himself and the different failures that he's had, he doesn't even think that he's the right person to do it. And then, you know, the beginning of the speech was uh, very poor in terms of getting people's hopes up, but that was intentional. To have the average person doom and relate about what's happening and then to build them up, it was, uh, it was a great speech. It makes perfect sense why he'd be the one to deliver it. He is more powerful now than he was before. He has Beatrice, he has Betelgeuse's authority, he has his whip, which is not the most effective. Whip is cool. But he tries, you know? And I really like how he doesn't even mention that he's the one who's defeated Sloth until deep into his speech. But compared to everyone else, he's so normal. He would mm. lose in a fight to all of his allies and friends, including Otto. Yeah. Otto would win. And especially Petra. You think it Yeah, Petra's strong as fuck. Petra probably could beat Regulus too if Regulus had no authority. A guy like this would fumble at inspiring an entire city filled with despair. But it's even more important that a pretty regular guy like Subaru is the one tasked with becoming Winston Churchill, I guess, and bringing hope to the masses. It's so wonderful to see our guy go from how he was at the beginning to how he is now. That's right, and people will still say there's no growth in this character. People will do mental... I mean, people that watched season one said that there was no growth in season one, which I think is fucking ridiculous. Like, if you're going to compare the character that we see, even in the beginning of arc three and the ar end of arc three, right? There's tremendous growth in each arc. People might not be able to see it because they're so biased and they hate this character and will basically say, well, I don't like that, therefore it's not growth to me.
people will always just figure out a way to complain and cry and, you know, about the show that they hate, but usually they're the biggest fans. And while I do think the biggest strength of this series is Subaru's character development, he's not the only one who grows as a character. Yeah, Emilia is a damsel in distress. Again. No, that's unfair to say. It's Regulus that took her, and Amelia is also trying to figure out ways to like help out. And she stands up for herself when arguing against the concept of this, you know, marriage that all these wives know. I think there's been tremendous growth for Amelia as well. Now, she still doesn't know what a virgin was, nor uh, I don't know how babies come. I don't know, but uh, hey, she's growing. She's developing. Season two had some incredible development for not just Subaru, but pretty much everyone else, especially Amelia. Yeah. Sure, she gets kidnapped by Regulus, but she's no damsel in distress here. She's actively doing everything she can. That's right. She's a spy, bro. She's a secret agent for us. To fight back against him and to inspire the other wives. And she still doesn't fully understand love, but I don't blame her. She only got her memories back a year ago. She spent most of her life in seclusion from a prejudiced world against her with Mountain Girl. Her only companion. But she does trust Subaru, her knight, and he trusts her. One of my favorite things about ReZero Season 2 was seeing everyone having a role to fill and executing. Here we've got even larger of a cast to work with, and now everybody has their own matchups. Except Al. What's Al up to? Priscilla and Liliana vs. Wrath. Wilhelm and Garfield vs. Lust, Wilhelm's wife and Machamp. Julius and Ricardo vs. Gluttony. Anastasia and Otto vs. Incoming Paperwork and Administrative Duties. Felix vs. Depression. Felix versus himself, bro. Krush vs. Having Almost As Much Misfortune As Subaru. And Reinhardt and Subaru to face off with Regulus and save Amelia. This is everything leading up to what's to come in February, and I can't wait. No mentions of Al at all? I know some people might be disappointed that much of what we've seen in Season 3 so far is just setup episodes for what's to come, but I don't dislike setup episodes. It's important to know what the stakes are and to see what we're getting into. Yeah, again, setup episodes are necessary in order for things to pop off, right? You can't just immediately start popping off. If there's nothing to kind of like anticipate due to the buildup, then what's the fun, right? But Again, the hype, I think, is all backloaded in Season 3, right? In terms of Arc 5. This first half, it was good. And there were some moments of pure insanity. The Capella introduction episode, you know, is very fond of. Even serious, right? Serious showing up and doing all that crazy shit versus Reinhardt. And then Regulus showing up. That part was crazy. The Capella stuff was crazy. And then, what was it? Then there was all these different, you know, things happening behind the scenes with Otto and Al and... What's happening with Al, right? He clearly flooded Priscilla. He clearly killed Kiritaka and the rest of Priscilla 10. He's being so suspicious in terms of knowledge of the witch cult and just doing shady shit. Is he actually Subaru? Who knows? A speech as well. But in terms of the action and the combat hype that people are expecting, I think, again, in February, that will be worse delivered. We've seen the destruction done to Priscilla and how many have already died, and some have met with an even worse fate. And even though ReZero has never been entirely focused on the action, the fights we've seen so far are fantastic. The animation quality is exceptional. Mm -hmm. This is a series that is once again being given the love and dedication that it deserves. So nice to see it. It's just so sad when you have shows like Tensura who get such a mid-adaptation from 8-Bit Studios. And I cannot believe there's still people saying it ain't that bad. You should be grateful. It's just like, how stupid could you be, bro? Like, imagine being so fucking cuck that you see like Mushoku Tensei getting all the love from the you know, studio buying, a studio intentionally made for the show. The close relationship that Nagatsuki Tapi, the author of ReZero, and Studio White Fox that they share in, you know, and how this can be made. Then you have Tensura, which I think should be one of the greats again. And it's just like, not in the same caliber. It's sad. So thank you, White Fox. These next few months without ReZero are gonna suck, but I'll just have to learn to actually leave my house for once or something. Two months. However, when ReZero comes back, it will no doubt bring us one step closer to finding the One Piece. The perfect anime. Hey, thanks for watching. This guy's channel is all about finding the perfect anime. As for when I'll rank the season three episodes, it'll be sometime after the season ends. And there are reliable sources pointing that we might get more than just eight episodes in February. So Good. we'll have to see.
If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to sub Dragon Blood for more Capella stepping on you. I'm getting pretty close to reaching 5,000 subs, which Woo! is my goal for the end of the year. So Let's if go. you do subscribe, that'd really make my day. And not subscribing is a strict violation. Remember, subscribing means nothing at the end of the day. Sub count is a terrible metric to indicate success of a channel. I don't give a fuck if people subs or unsubs from my channel. Actually, it's better that you unsub from my channel so that we trim the fat. Sub counts are an inflated number that only inflates the ego of content creators and then sets up poor expectations of what kind of viewership that they should have only for them to be depressed. Because the only thing that matters is that you create a community of people that want to watch you for you rather than the content you, you know, serve and the monthly viewership based of long-form content. But hey, please go check out Mr. Action First channel. Here's a link to the video. Go give it a like if you did. I'll see you guys next time.